So, Paul, first of all, thank you. That looks exhausting. You know, we had somebody in the audience ask, are you afraid you're going to fall? You, you had know, that look a little. <laughs> actually, not at all. Not at all. Because if you're afraid to fall, you might as well not even give it a whirl. So it's not about afraid, but you felt stable. Absolutely. Good. Well, I, one of you guys <laughs> asked that. I said, that's a good question. So, so let's talk, obviously, the, the big elephant in the room, cost. Hmm. Uh, today, five years, 20 years. What are the numbers, Ethan? Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, uh, this is a rehabilitation tool. Right. So uh, we are talking about plus 100,000 into rehabilitation. But our goal is to make this uh, affordable device. So by 2014, that it is at least in the area where you see prosthetic devices, right. and where prosthetic devices are reimbursed. It's oftentimes it's in the thirty to fifty thousand dollars. So thirty to fifty thousand dollars, about the cost of a mid-sized car. That's right. All right. Yeah. Um, so put it in that context, doesn't seem much, much at all. No. All right. You can give somebody a yes answer instead of a no answer, exactly. and that ultimately pretty stable over time because it's motors and equipment. It's really not uh, you know technology curve dropping too much, I would imagine. No, I mean, uh, we, we see, I mean, there's a lot of improvements we need to do, uh, and I kind of elaborated on it here. Um, balancing and uh, making it slimmer, our goal is more and more to make it so that actually you like to wear it. So uh, it would ultimately become teams. something in addition to a wheelchair. In other words, you might have a wheelchair in your house, and then you take the exoskeleton and use that when you needed it, go upstairs or to do things you needed to reach. It becomes part of a total picture. It doesn't become a replacement, does it? Not yet, but uh, I'd like Paul to answer this one. Uh, you know, I, I fully expect that with this technology and the road that we're on, that this could possibly someday replace a wheelchair. Replace it. Yeah. Right. And I would be totally okay with that. <laughs> You'd be just, if you never saw one again, that would be just about right, yeah, I'm sure. So I saw something you showed on the screen that I thought also was very interesting. You were talking about collaboration across different centers in the U.S., and then you even mentioned Europe. How do you have a collaboration model when you also obviously have a for-profit model? How do, how do companies work together when one company wants a technology, perhaps so that it would be theirs, and yet you're talking about an open system? Tell us how that can work. Yeah, in this case, it's uh, obviously when you have such a powerful technology. And in rehabilitation, um, it isn't like uh, it has been a very technology-focused <laughs> place. Right. You go into rehabilitation, you see balls, you, you, it's very hands-on in many ways. So what we have found is that people, it's like they're starving for something like this. And it's like they've been waiting. So th it's been almost like they, they are jumping towards us. They're coming to you. And uh, so obviously we are in a very fortunate uh, situation there. And, uh, but we decided just one year ago, ago to pretty much, because of this, to open pretty much open up source. what we were going to do for the next three, four years. I mean, think about that. Most companies, they keep everything secret right. for, 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 until they basically launch it. We took absolutely the opposite approach. We opened it up because we thought we can't do this alone, and we don't know exactly who to talk to. So that's why uh, we just opened it up. We were on TED uh, in February. And, uh, we, and through that, we, we got a stream of people right. from all different industries, not only medical. And ideal, for instance. Right. Uh, and, 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 and that's been really the, the magic of this, and, uh, and we need it. So one last question. You mentioned that you know, there are 70 million people who are wheelchair-bound, but there's five times that number who are elderly, who are motion-restricted, who you know, literally you could use help in mobility even though they may not be wheelchair bound. You know, we heard er earlier uh, from David that getting off our asses was a big thing and part of our total health picture. Mm -hmm. So I'm never, <laughs> yeah. gonna, never gonna sit again, I think. But uh, <laughs> is, that, is this a market that's even bigger than perhaps a wheelchair market? Or, or is it really an elderly market as well? Uh, absolutely, I mean, we are talking about that uh, people above uh, 65 are going to triple in size from 600 million to 2 billion in only in 2040. So here we are talking about people with osteoarthritis, other complications that just simply get out of this chair is a major issue. Right. And having something that can power you up is, uh, at least I think about myself, much rather something that I would like to do than having that surgery. Great. Well, thank you. That was just really fantastic. Thanks. Paul, thank you for coming. Too. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Thank you. It's a pleasure.